Good morning, everyone. Uh, glad you're here. I'm glad uh, you're tuned in this morning that you joined us. And I just want to say, Happy Father's Day. I'm glad our fathers are here, and today we just want to honor them and, and thank God for them. Uh, just a little bit about Father's Day. Uh, back in 1910, Father's Day was first proposed to be observed. I guess this lady was sitting in church, and a couple of years uh, before that, uh, they had established a Mother's Day celebration, and this lady's sitting there thinking, why don't we do something for the fathers? So she proposed it out in Spokane, Washington, that we should do something for our fathers. Well, uh, about 1916, uh, it started to catch on a little bit, but still nobody was too uh, thrilled about Father's Day. But then in 1924, uh, President Calvin Coolidge recommended that each state recognize Father's Day if they wanted to. So still nothing too established. Uh, in 1957, uh, some in Congress tried to set it in as an official day. But still, not until 1972, when Richard Nixon permanently established this day of observance in our country as a holiday, uh, as Father's Day. So there, a brief thing on Father's Day. So anyway, I'm glad you're all here. And so I just want to open the word, uh, open the service uh, with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for watching over us. You are our heavenly Father. And God, we thank you how you watch over us. We don't even know it, God, and you're watching over us. God, we thank you for that. God, today as we've gathered here to hear your word preached a little and be with our family, and God, we want to honor our fathers. So God, I pray a special blessing on each of our fathers. God, I thank you for them. And God, uh, just bless our fathers today. Thank you. And we ask a blessing on this service. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you. Everyone stand up if you want. It helps. I just want to honor our Father in Heaven. Happy Father's Day, Jesus. It's a good day for Him. Every time. 
dreaming in their dead end jobs. Every driver driving through the rush hour mob. I feel it in my spirit, feel it in my bones. We're gonna send revival, bring them all back home.
today a special honor because it's Father's Day God we just hone into what you're doing in this room right now Jesus Holy Spirit we in just we just invite you in here right now to just heal hearts mend relationships convict our hearts God whatever it is that needs to be done God we invite you in here right now just to take over and do what you need to do we come here to get filled lord jesus and that is why you came to so we just open our hearts to you lord jesus for any mending that needs to be done and if we're in a great place god you just love that too so we just take every single situation god and we just ask that we could just elevate that just one notch this day, God. We praise you and worship you, Holy Father.
heart to him. God, you are great in power and glory. You're great in mercy and you're great in heaven. You are great in battle and wonder and you are king over this earth. Jesus, we recognize your kingship, God.
is give Jesus the power. I think what we could, the biggest present we could do for him today is latch on to the power of his name and use it and function in the power that he called us to function in.
you this day. Happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day to our father of the faith, Gerald, Jim, Dad, John, all the fathers in my life, God, I just thank you so much. Thank you, God. We bless this day, God. We bless, we honor. Where the power of a husband in this day and age is beginning to lose its power, God, from this stage right now, we say we honor every father in this building, every single father, God, who you have ordained. Without them, we would not be here. So every single one of us, we honor our fathers. Where there is a rift between father and child, God, we ask right now that wall would tumble now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for another day. We get to come freely and worship your name. Thank you, Jesus. Your precious name we pray. Amen. Say hello to a friend behind you. Thank you. If we could have the ushers come and like to receive the morning offering at this time. God, we are so thankful for our fathers. We thank you for them. God, we thank you for the sacrifice they've made. God, this morning as we receive the offering, we ask you to bless it, and we thank you for it. Just pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are receiving the morning offering, let's spend a few minutes run through our weekly bulletin here. Um, first of all, happy Father's Day, and uh, thank you for our fathers and the sacrifices you all have made, our fathers have made. Um, if you get a chance, call your dad or tell him happy Father's Day. Uh, tonight, no youth group at the Fagley's. Uh, spend time with your dads, it says. Monday, June 17th, uh, the Mexico Missions uh, team is having a meeting here. Uh, June 20th, the Pops girls are having a bonfire. Check that out. Um, Saturday, June 22nd, volunteer appreciation breakfast at Perkins for the One Way Kids uh, Children's Church volunteer workers. Uh, please let uh, Lorraine know if you can make that. RSVP with Lorraine for that uh, appreciation breakfast. Um, Monday through Friday, June 24th through the 28th, Vacation Bible School here at the church goes from 9 till noon daily, ages 5 to 12. Sign up in the church foyer today if you can. If you have any questions, contact Alan. Uh, the Minnesota Crossroads Sunday afternoon dinner cruises happen down on Pelican Lake, uh, leaving from Fair Hills. Uh, there, I talked with Sue this morning. She said there's still tickets available uh, for today's cruise, and then there's another one on July 21st and again on August 11th. So if you have any questions, contact Sue Walter. Excuse me. Then on uh, Friday, June 28th, uh, the church outing to the Red Hawks baseball and fireworks at Newman Outdoor Field in Fargo. A baseball game up there uh, we want to go to. So that's uh, June 28th. Sign up in the foyer today. Uh, there's, the tickets are cheap, and if you've got any more questions, contact Alan. Congratulations to Alex Wolf and Lindsay Rice. They were married yesterday up in Mountain Iron, Minnesota. So congratulations to them. 
that's where Pastor Tim is with the family. He got to uh, give his daughter off in marriage and also be the one who married him. So uh, quite an honor for those guys. Um, due to the lack of commitment and park filling up, the Lake Sakakawea vacation for the church has been canceled. They're filled up out there, plus we didn't have enough folks signed up to go. So uh, don't worry about that. We'll do something different next year. Um, also, dads, uh, on the back, as you are exiting today, there's dad's root beer on the table out there. So all you dads, as you go out, just a little recognition for dads. We didn't give you flowers. We gave them to the moms. That's so correct. dads, <laughs> dads, you grab a root beer on your way out. Um, so, all right. Um, as we know, it's Father's Day, and I was thinking, how do I introduce Gerald? You know, I've known Gerald ever since I was just first can remember anybody, I can remember Gerald, because we lived up at Heideland Lake, and we spent many summer evenings up at the camp. Uh, but we can't not recognize Grandpa Jim, Pastor Jim Herb, who founded the church way back when there was a calling on his life to do such a thing. Gerald was very instrumental in establishing the church here, and so Grandpa Jim, thank you. We honor you for what you've done, and Gerald, we thank you for all you have done. This morning, as we were back in our meeting, back here, uh, Gerald, he looked at the group up there, which was mostly our, our uh, music team, and he looked at him. he said, you know, you guys are like my grandchildren, he said. He said, because I, I was here and established this with an older generation, and now the younger generation has taken over. And he also said something about he's been preaching for 64 years. So, Gerald, would you come and preach some more? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm turned on, yeah. Can I get up the steps here? I'm just not as young as I used to be, but I'm still here. Hallelujah. And thank you for coming. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you this very special morning. It was Father's Day morning. God bless the fathers, the dads. It was an honor, and I couldn't help but think that even as I sat here and I thought about this church, all the years that have transpired since we were ministering up in the north woods of Strawberry Lake area. And I can still remember the day when all the men lined up on the front bench at Strawberry Lake, the old church building we had up there, the Tabernacle Building. Jim Herb there with Darrell Durstein there. And uh, uh, one of the brothers from down in Vergas was sitting up front row. I can think of some more. I see their faces. I can't remember their names. But we laid hands on them and ordained them to establish a church in Detroit Lakes. Jim was already involved in doing that work here, and he, we, we ordained him as a pastor. And here you are this year, 2013, and you're looking bright. I enjoyed the songs you sang this morning. You sound like you're in a revival, or want a revival, or expecting a revival. Something good is about to happen. Amen. Always think that way. Hey, you're not normal people. You knew that, didn't you? You're not normal. I'm assuming that almost all of you have been born again one time or the other sometime, some time ago. You've been born again? That makes you not normal. Amen. You're of another kind of a people known as the heavenly bunch. And that's what I'm going to speak to you about this morning on our heavenly calling. We do have a calling as Christians. Before I get into that, though, I want to introduce a special guest I brought with me, my wife, which is going to be 64 years in about one week from now, our anniversary, June the 25th, we're going to be, be married 64 years. And, and right after we got married, we went into ministry. And uh, shortly after we were into ministry, we knew we were coming to Minnesota from eastern Pennsylvania. We moved to Minnesota back in the year 1951. And so I praise God for that. We have also with us this morning uh, Diane Kilpatrick. And she's working for us at Strawberry Lake Christian Retreat this summer. She's heading up at the housing department, taking kind of Beulah's place. Beulah's got to a place where she is willing to give up now her laundry department. <laughs> Beulah was so efficient at taking care of the laundry of all the rooms, cabins, and the motel rooms on the tabernacle side. She did it for 48 years. And I was able to tell her, it's about time you take it a little more easy. It, wouldn't, it wasn't difficult to tell her that because she's going slower anyway. 
And, I, and, and she's having a hard time even keep up to me, and I've been going much slower. And maybe it's because we've been alive so long. That could be part of the reason. But anyway, Diane has her daughter with her, Renee. Uh, Diane stand up and smile at the people. She's also an attorney, a lawyer. But she graduated from her IOM school this past winter. And she wanted to be doing something effective this summer. And we invited her. She offered her time, volunteered to come to Minnesota. And Renee, her daughter, is going to take care of Hallelujah Hut this summer. Renee, stand up and smile at the people. God bless you. Thank you. They're from northern Florida. They drove up here to Strawberry Lake to be with us for the summer. This week, we're having a special Native American week. We're going to have Rain Song with us this week and a few other groups coming in to sing a different speakers every night. Uh, Bill Butler is with us from, from Alabama. He is a Cherokee Indian chief, and he's a, he heads up a big national organization, and he's going to be speaking, I believe, on Tuesday night. And tonight, I believe, Daryl Winter is speaking from White Earth. He's speaking tonight in the service there. And we're going to have a Navajo Indian on uh, Thursday night, a well-known man who I've never met yet, but I understand he's spoken all over the, all over the nation. He's coming to Christian Strawberry Lake for the first time. So we're expecting a great summer this year. And remember, that's your camp. I want to thank you as a church because your pastors and your leaders here have been willing to uh, tithe your income to Strawberry Lake year-round. And I want to thank you for that because that has been a real lifesaver for us because always the winter months are difficult for us to keep everything going. We still have bills to pay up there, insurance bills and all kinds of other bills that we're repairing stuff and having to take care of things. And there's no way we could keep it going. But this church, you've been keeping Strawberry Lake Christian Retreat alive year after year after year. And thank you so very much. Really appreciate that. It means so much to us. We have the Legacy Partners. We have Blessing Club members that give us so much money per month, year round. We're not, we don't have enough of them, but we have some. And with your help, that helps us get through the winter months, which was really difficult for us normally. So, praise the Lord. I'm excited, Amen. even though I'm older than what I was last year. You know, I used to think when I was younger, I used to wonder, why do old people seem to be so gloom-looking? when I was young, because they shouldn't be that way. They should be the happiest people walking on the earth because they're the ones closest to being in heaven. Because they won't have to live so much longer in this world if they're that old. Now I'm there. I remember years ago, I thought once you hit the 80s, you're going to be old. Now since I hit 80 about five years ago, I don't feel that way anymore about it. Now my body reminds me that I'm old, though. My body keeps talking to me. But I'm taking my time with it. Hoping for the better. God bless you, Dave Seberg. You stay alive, you're coming right along the same way. Just stay alive. <laughs> God bless Dave and his wife and all the Seberg family. Praise the Lord. And Barry Schroeder and Sharon, God bless you. Barry is so special in my life. Appreciate Barry, and he's part of your church here. He spoke this past week, and your pastor spoke last Sunday night. Thank you for allowing him to leave this congregation and come up to Strawberry Lake and speak to us on Sunday night. I expected him to bring a whole busload of you up, but he forgot to ask you to come on his bus. Well, he forgot to get a bus, too. Anyway, Tim, Pastor Tim was with us, and we had a good time, and Brother Jim and Verda came up to hear their pastor, and a few others of you did come along up there and with, on your own transportation. And Barry spoke one night last week. We had what we called Pastor's Appreciation Week. And that was very interesting to me because somehow Strawberry Lake Christian Retreat has been influential to establish quite a few works in this region. And so we had um, Bob Sinclair from the Richwood Church come and speak for us one night. We had Russell Smith from Park Rapids Church come and speak to us. And he's from the Frontline Congregation, Frontline Church in Park Rapids. It's a great church in Park Rapids. In case you didn't know it, only for three years, but his church is growing. They're building a new church building. God bless people that have a vision of building a new church building. Are you all listening to me? You guys should have had one here a long time ago already. Come on, Durstein, don't be too hard on these people. Uh, but, you know, when you get a congregation that gets at least two-thirds full, the, uh, the congregation in their seats, you're not quite there tonight, this morning. But I know why that is, because your pastor's not here. So some people say, well, I'm not coming to church. pastor's not going to be here. And that's the way it used to be anyway years ago. 
But anyway, when you get a new church building, it puts incentive upon the church people to get out and bring more people in. Because usually you build a big church, the new church building gets bigger. And I think of Brother Steve Pump up at Ten Strike. He got his vision when I built the tabernacle up at Strawberry Lake to seat 900 people. And he knew he should be doing a new building, and he didn't have the nerve to do it. But he said, if Jerry Stein had the nerve to do that way up in the woods, he's going to do it up at Ten Strike. And he did has a wonderful congregation going there at Ten Strike near Bemidji. He was, him and his wife came to visit us this past week for, for a few hours. We had a nice time together with them. This morning, I want to share with you an understanding. Can you all say understanding? An understanding. You know, all of us should be understanding things about God a little bit better as we grow older. I'll say that slower. All of us should be understanding the things about God and about our lives with God a little bit more carefully as we grow older. And I want to give you an understanding about our heavenly calling. We have a heavenly calling. And I know what you're thinking. You think, well, we always were taught that, that when we die, we're going to go to heaven. And we're called to die someday. Well, that's not exciting. Called to die. Who cares to die? I don't want to die. I want to stay alive. But we like the idea that once we do die, we're going to go to heaven. Isn't that true? We heard that before. But what if I would tell you that God doesn't really want you to be anxious to die to go to heaven if he has a heavenly calling that you could already enjoy in this life in Minnesota? What if you could have a heavenly life walking in Minnesota where we're required to pay taxes? I know you don't like the tax part. Uh, but what if I could explain to you that you could have a heavenly calling and still be a human being paying taxes in Minnesota and become aware of the fact that for real, God has a heavenly purpose for you living on this earth now. I want to talk to you about that this morning because I want to learn more about it myself. You know, I always learn the most when I start teaching what I think I know. I'm never, never too sure what I do know until I hear me say what I think I know. That's true with every one of you. You really don't know what you know until you're willing to tell somebody what you think you know. And once you tell somebody what you think you know, that's when you begin to learn more. Because usually when you tell somebody what you think you know, the other person is going to tell you what they are sure they do know. <laughs> and then you compare what you think you know with what they do know, and that helps you learn more than what you knew before. Am I going too fast? <laughs> it's important for us to understand that each one of us does know something. And we'd all like to know more. And so turn with me in your Bibles to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. I'm going to start there and talk about our heavenly calling in 1 Corinthians. And I think I'll start reading out of verse number uh, 44. It is talking about the human body. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Then he goes on to say, and here's what I want to get, I want you to catch this thought. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Now, if you pinch yourself hard enough, you will feel it. If you pinch a person next to you, they might even say, ouch. Now, that's a natural body that you're pinching. But he says, there is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Verse 45, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Do you know who the last Adam was known to be? Jesus. You sang about Jesus this morning. He breaks every chain. He is made a quickening spirit, but man was made a living soul. Your soul is the area of your emotion, your feelings. Your soul, your living a human is a living soul, but Jesus the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. He's talking about the human now. When you first come in this world, you become acquainted with your physical and natural body first. Remember when you were a baby, or at least you parents that have a baby, you get excited when the baby touches your nose, and you realize the baby now is comparing its nose with your nose, or it touches your cheek, and it makes you happy. It discovers it has a cheek, just like mama or papa has a cheek. Makes us feel good. So the first consciousness we have is the physical, the natural. That's what he's saying here. The first man, he then says, is of the earth, verse 47. 
The first man is of the earth, earthy. Then he says, the second man is the Lord from heaven. Now, I want to keep your thoughts on this idea. This what I'm going to bring across to you this morning is that there's two, there's two as aspects of our life. There is the natural, and then there is the invisible, the spiritual. So the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Now, we haven't seen him physically. He is a spirit. He is the Son of God. He's Jesus. Then he says, as the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. That's verse 48. And as the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. He's implying here that maybe we could actually, even though we live on this earth, we could have a mind that could be heavenly. What do you think? You think we could have a heavenly thinking? Amen. I don't mean anxious to die and get out of this body and go to another planet called planet heaven. I'm not talking about that kind of heavenly. But there's a heavenly that's available right here in Minnesota. That's here for our taking, for us receiving. So he says, as is, is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall, I like this part, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's present tense. He's not talking about after you die, you're going to bear the image of the heavenly. He's talking about if we, are, if we have borne the image of the earthy, I have borne the image of the earthy. I'm an earthy guy. I probably look a little bit like my dad used to look. I have a brother, live, a brother here in church this morning. I probably look like my brother. His name is Darrell. He's earthy. I'm earthy. And uh, <laughs> so what's earthy bears the image of the earthy. But then he says, but what is, what is heavenly? But we that are earthy shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now he's talking about Jesus. Because Jesus is heavenly, right? You're allowed to say amen if you agree with me. They allow that in Minnesota. You, may, you even do that on a Sunday morning. They don't mind. The, our laws allow us that in Minnesota to say amen on a Sunday morning, if you agree. So he says in verse 50, the final verse of this portion. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. But keep the thought in mind my subject title is Our Heavenly Calling. Now, most of us as Christians don't think about our heavenly calling living in this world. We think of our natural calling. Am I called to be a carpenter? Am I called to be a plumber? Called to be an electrician? Am I called to be a preacher, an evangelist, a prophet? What am I called to be? Well, leaving those particular ministries aside, He has called us with a heavenly calling. Another dimension while we're in a dimension. So we have a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.17. To bear that thought further. Therefore if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. That verse has always impressed me. Therefore if any man be in Christ. So I discovered that when you become born again. You can honestly tell the world. That Christ came inside of you. When you become a Christian, Jesus comes into your heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. So we know Jesus can come inside of us, but you think it's possible for us to come into Christ? Can we come into Jesus? Now, you really believe that Jesus can come inside of you? Do you really believe that? Yes. Is that possible? I mean, how can you tell when he came in? It made you itch all over, didn't it? Oh, you just got the itches all, you just got the scratching all over. You know that Jesus just came in your, no, no. But you could tell when Jesus came in, couldn't you? You said, give you a sharp pain in your back. Oh, oh, Jesus just came in. Oh, no. But you could tell when Jesus came in, couldn't you? There was, there was a spirit of joy, accomplishment. Whoa, it's real. Wonderful. Thank you, Lord. The spirit of peace. You felt his peace. You felt his love. Something about God made himself real to you when Jesus came in. 
And so really, when he came in, you sensed his peace, you sensed his love, you sensed his joy. That's what he is in spirit. By the way, he's also a heavenly being. And so if I could feel peace, feel his love, feel his joy through my natural soul, maybe I could choose to desire to walk in that love, choose to desire to walk in that peace, to walk in that joy while I'm in Minnesota. I wonder if that's possible. Well, if I believe it's possible for Christ to come inside of me, Maybe I could make a decision to choose to walk in Christ, to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit. And in so doing, maybe I'd be walking in heavenly places. Maybe I'd be in heavenly places in Christ Jesus if I would think that way. I wonder if God would like that to happen to us. I wonder if that's what God really had in mind when he sent Jesus to this world and then gave us the Holy Ghost to empower us, to overcome us, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, through the name of Jesus, so that we could come into a heavenly condition while we are still paying taxes in Minnesota and wearing heavy clothes when it gets cold in the wintertime and shoveling snow. We can still be in heavenly faith. This is exciting. Do you think it's exciting? Shall I stop now or shall I keep going? I'm not done yet. There's more I want to talk to you about this heavenly place idea. So we have a scripture here in uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Here's where it gave me this idea very strongly. Uh, let me see if I can begin here at Ephesians chapter 1. And let me start reading at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Does your Bible say that same, same words? I'll read that again. Verse 3 it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In Christ. So he's, assuming, he's implying here that what's in Christ, from God's point of view, is heavenly places. Does that discourage you? I know some people say, don't bring him so close. We want to wait till we die first to go there. Don't bring the heavenly place already here in Detroit Lakes, it's too close. I want to live to be 95 and then go to heaven. Then I'll be in heavenly places. But what if God wants you to discover heavenly places before you die? <laughs> I don't mind that. If I can understand it, and if I know how to grab it and walk in it and find it and do it and be a part of it, oh, Lord, help me. Excuse me for getting excited. That's all right. You may get excited too if I do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me read that again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us, listen to this, the way he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Here he implies that he ordered this already before the earth was formed. Did you get that? According as he hath chosen us in him, God chose us in Jesus before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. In other words, it implies that God knew me before he even made the earth. In fact, he even says that I was in Christ from God's point of view, from the Father's point of view. I was already in Christ before the earth was formed. And so were you. You that are born again in Christ, you that are Christians, you were already in Christ before the earth was formed. Verse 5, is says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children, he 
with that thought in mind, predestinated you to become his children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. God already had you in mind before he created the earth. Now, you got to think about that. Now, how could God do that? Well, I don't know God that well, but I do know that God is the creator. He's the maker of the heavens and the earth, and he never had a beginning. He always was. He is and always shall be. I don't fully understand that idea, but, I mean, I was not always, but I was before I was, though, according to this scripture. I mean, from God's point of view, I was already in Christ before I was born. It's a little bit deep now. Are you still following me? Uh, I was already in Christ before I was physically born. In fact, I was in Christ before the earth was even formed. That's what the scripture says here. And then and during that time, he predestinated me to, to be a child of Jesus, by Jesus, predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us acceptable in the beloved. Which he is saying here at this point, he said, we come into this, fellow, into this family through the grace of God. He says, through the praise of the glory of his grace. Verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, <coughs> wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. In other words, he already thought of us, we born-again Christians, he thought of us in his mind before he even formed the earth, before the foundation of the world. So you have to picture yourself that from God's point of view, he already knew you before you knew you. He even knew you, he knew about you before even your parents knew about you. Can you accept that? That's, getting, that's kind of getting spiritual. But then again, we serve a spiritual God. God is a spirit. And Jesus comes into our lives as a spirit. He is the spirit of God when he comes into us. He is the Holy Spirit. So he hath made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, we're living in that time now, verse 10, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, <coughs> both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Now here again he's implying two places, in heaven and also on earth. Though I'm walking on earth today, in my heart, in my spirit, I accepted the God of heaven and made him my Lord. I make him my master. I make him my king, and so in my mind, I'm thinking of the God of heaven, and I want to walk in the ways of the God of heaven, and I ask the God of heaven to help me to be like him, and I ask the God of heaven to help me change and be more loving, be more peaceful, be more joyful, be more patient, all the fruit of the Spirit which describes the character of Jesus, with Jesus in me, I believe I have a right to want to become more like Jesus. <clears throat> I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever had before. I want more of his great love, so full, so rich, so free. I want more of Jesus, so I'll give him more of. So I'll give him more of. So I'll give him more of me. <clears throat> Isn't that neat? I mean, you're, you can do that while you live in Minnesota. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not telling you anything new. You already knew all this, but I'm excited just telling you about you all over again so you get it again. Because sometimes we kind of miss some of the most exciting part of our whole Christian walk. We, some of us thought Christianity was just joining a church and coming to church once a week and be faithful and give some money every week and make the pastor happy that we were in church again. Oh, that's boring. 
That's not what God had in mind. <laughs> in fact, he had in mind that you get to love God so much you can hardly wait for a Sunday. You count the days, only three more days till a Sunday we can come together with the body of God, the body of Christ, and enjoy fellowship with Jesus, fellowship with God, sing about him, worship him, clap your hands, praise him. <clears throat> I enjoy Sister Fagley up here uh, singing her songs as a leader and seeing the excitement in her face. You know, when you do a lot of singing yourself, when you praise the Lord a lot, you get excited about what you're talking about. And if we don't do it ourselves, then we kind of wait. We wanted to get over with as early as possible so we get on with the program and get out of here. <laughs> kind of a waste of our time if, if it's that way. But anyway, God really wants you to enjoy the Lord. He wants you to enjoy Him. <clears throat> and I want to get that point across to you. And I'm not done here yet. I still want to uh, bring out some more thoughts. You know, in the human... What we've been taught in our churches, including General Durst, I've been taught this, I've taught it many times too, <clears throat> that we know that when Adam sinned, that changed the whole course that God had in mind when he first created the earth and put Adam and Eve on the earth. When God brought Adam and Eve into the garden, God's plan was to have an extension of heaven on this planet which he created called the earth. That was God's thinking. He made Adam perfect. He made Eve perfect. <clears throat> Everything was perfect. There was no sin in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. It was, everything was just like God. <clears throat> it was perfect. But sin came. Satan revealed himself as a devil and caused Adam and Eve to want to understand evil. And so since Adam and Eve wanted to know what is evil all about, God gave them their wish. And then from then on, Satan, the devil, became prince and power of the, of the earth, of the people. <clears throat> but then Jesus came as a second Adam, and he allowed us to become born again. And we can take on the spirit of Christ and become his people saved from the curse. Saved from what the devil brought to the earth. Now it looks to me like God really wants to continue what he began with Adam and Eve before sin came. Because when sin came, God produced a law to cause everybody to walk in the law in order to be able to make God feel good about his, unit, his, his world, his people. And so we were all under the law. And we were born in sin <clears throat> we were told that because of Adam and Eve's sin, our natural man is the original sin. The original sin that we have to live with. But we can be forgiven. But God wants you to understand that when he lets you become born again and you welcome Jesus into your life, you allowed a heavenly power, a heavenly force to come into your life. You allowed the Holy Spirit to give you total victory over all your human limitations. <clears throat> and you have a right to see yourself changing while you're in this world. I mean, I enjoy seeing that. I get blessed when I see what Jim Erb produced here with his wife. I mean, they were the first pastors here, and they were able to turn their hands over to another pastor. And you're still coming to the same building, same church, and you're serving the Lord. They're, they have children. You're getting children. I mean, the people of God keep expanding, growing, increasing. Their church is getting stronger and stronger. Had a man up at our Strawberry Lake just last night. It was Friday night. It was Friday night, not last night. Friday night. And he said, there's a great move of God happening all over the world. Well, I like to hear that because I believe that. God has that in mind. <clears throat> God's not going to let Satan take over the world. Satan has his time. It began in the Garden of Eden. So time had a beginning and time is going to have an ending. If it is only in time that you and I have to put up with our Adamic nature. And really, you don't have to put up with your Adamic nature if you understand what God did for you. If God really converted you and changed you from darkness into light, and you put on Christ, you don't have to be continu continually controlled by the Adamic original sin. And that's what I'm just grasping here. And I heard a preacher this week, Brother Joe Clausen from Frazee, speak on this subject. And he enlightened me a little more on this. And I got excited about it. And I began to search it out more. Thank you. That's very nice of you to give me that water. I do have some for me in the back here, too. Thank you. God bless you. 
and that helps. Excuse me, I'll take a swallow. But anyway, uh, you know, when I teach this to you, I'm learning it too myself. Every preacher will tell you that when a preacher is preaching a message, he's the one that gets the most out of it, the preacher. Trying hard for you to get something out of it too, while I'm getting something out of it. <clears throat> Let me give you the scripture in Ephesians 2 and verse 6. He is, he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians 2 and verse 6. Let me read verse 4 first. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened us together with Christ. Remember we spoke earlier in the first, very first, uh, the verses I read to you were that, that Jesus Christ is a quickening spirit. We are a living soul, but Christ is a quickening spirit. Now, verse 5 in this chapter, verse chapter 2 of Ephesians. Even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And, verse 6, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, that's where we are now. You are there now. Uh, but if you don't realize you're there, it's not going to mean much to you. But it's my duty to explain this to you. So you can recognize that you are already in heavenly places, even though you're in Minnesota required to pay taxes. Amen. Even though you're going to have a job. But you can be on the job and having the peace of God rule in your life. You can be on the job having the joy of the Lord hit you from moment to moment. And all, for, all of a sudden you find yourself saying, Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You get happy and you're wondering what made you get happy. Well, because it was the presence of God that just quickened you. Or you already were quickened, but you become aware of the fact that something good. In fact, you're not always sure what good happened until ever you find yourself praising the Lord and you wonder, well, when that, well, you know what? God's with me. That's why I'm happy. I'm in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine the whole church walking this way? Making us aware that we are constantly in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? For me, that means... I'm constantly conscious of walking in the love of God. I'm constantly conscious of aware of the joy of the Lord being my strength. That I'm, a, I'm allowed to be happy at the oddest times if I want to be. And allowing me to be peaceful when other people are scared. People are afraid there's going to be a war happening at any moment. It's going to be this is going to happen. Somebody could muck you. They, they, could, they, they could hurt you. They could rob you. You could be attacked. But you don't have to be thinking about those things. You can think upon Jesus, who is your peace. He is your love. He is your joy. He is your meekness. He is your goodness. He is your temperance. He is your gentleness. He is your faith. He is everything good. If that everything that you want to get in heaven already has come to you here in the person of Jesus. Last Sunday morning, I spoke on the subject of salvation up at Strawberry Lake Christian Retreat, I try to explain to them what salvation really means. And the one thought I want to just quickly give you is this. The word salvation in the Greek, in the original language, is zozo. I learned this from T.L. Osborne, Evangelist T.L. Osborne, when, he, when I first got saved back in 49, and that really impressed me. He said, zozo, if you looked it up in the dictionary, in the commentary dictionary, the word zozo is the Greek word for salvation. When you become born again, you become a recipient of God's salvation. Can you all say salvation? salvation. That's in, in the English word. But the original word is zozo, spelled S-O-Z-O, zozo. And if you study that in the dictionary, the word zozo in the original means everything that you anticipated getting once you're in heaven. The love of God, the peace of God, the goodness of God, the joy of God, the healing of God, the, the, the health of God, prosperity of God. Everything that's in heaven, God really had in mind to give that to you on this earth through Jesus. Now, I don't mind that thought. That's, that's, a, that's a tremendous thought. That hit me big because I thought uh, that God only wanted me to get off the earth, to go to heaven. He sent Jesus here to give me a ticket coupon to qualify to fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. When am I going to go to some other planet, heaven someday? It's not that way. No, God did everything 
possible for you to get the heavenly bliss and blessing that you were hoping to get once you get to heaven. He wants you to begin to get it here. Have it here. He wants you to understand that He is with you here and you can dwell in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But it's up to you to have it. Amen. It's up to me to have it. I want to, be, I want to be full of the peace of God. When other people get scared and jittery and uncertain, I want to be able to just be steady and just have a smile on my face. Well, God bless you. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. Something good is going to come out of this. And when everybody else is, uh, is arrogant, and nowadays in our, in our society, things are going tough in our, in our country, the, the way the government is handling people in America, unsure about different things in our government, makes people very uneasy. But you can walk in the love of God. And instead of being arrogant like other people might be, you find yourself being steady, just understanding and just forgiving, being forgiving. I mean, that's, that's, we can have that if we want it. And that's what I'm saying this morning. We, God has given us a heavenly calling. Not a, and, and the heavenly calling is for present tense. Not just living a Christian life to be able to escape this world and go to planet heaven. He wants you to understand that what you were looking forward to getting in heaven, God really said you can have it already here. But it's your choice. It's my choice. If I, if I want to take it. He had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And verse 7, that's still chapter 2 of Ephesians. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. In other words, he wants us to understand that he wants you to have the feeling that you can know you're in heavenly places in spite of your condition. You may feel like you're still weak in the faith. And you, maybe you are weak in the faith. All of us are weak in the faith before we, before we become strong in the faith. And many of us are not sure we're strong in the faith. Other people see you and they think you may be strong in the faith while you are aware there's yourself. I'm not very strong. I feel like I'm so weak in the faith. But from God's point of view, if you're in the faith, you're in Christ. And if you're in Christ, you're in heavenly places. So let the heavenly place rule your life. In other words, let Christ rule you. Always confess He is your love. Keep confessing with your mouth He is your joy. And I, the joy of the Lord is my strength, the love of God. Love lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. I mean, when I'm in Christ, I'm also in His love. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So I have the joy of the Lord I'm right here in Minnesota. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father. Of, well, the Father lives inside of me. My body is His temple. So I have His peace. Come on. I do. Now. I'm a peaceful person. You've got to look at yourself in the mirror and say that to yourself once in a while at home. When you're by yourself, thank you for your peace, Lord. I accept you. You must confess it. I mean, that's how you, you must declare it. And it becomes real to you when you declare it. Don't wait till you feel it first before you believe it. Believe it because the Word of God says that's your portion. Christ is your portion. He is Prince of Peace. He is in you. You have His peace even if you're nervous. If you're nervous, nervously thank Him for His peace. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your, for your peace. <laughs> you may do that. That's faith. Confess what He is, and when you confess what He is, you'll become more like Him. But if you wait to feel what he is before you believe what he is, you may never reach that place in this life. God wants us to live in the place that he has chosen for us to live in. He doesn't want us to stay the way we've been. We are constantly improving. Every one of us is growing. We are growing in God's graces. We're growing in the Lord. Because we're seated together with Jesus in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm talking about our heavenly calling now. I know you've got an earthly body. I have an earthly body. I'm subject to temptation. I'm subject to sin. I'm subject to any of those evil things that can come upon any human. But I have the ability to be able to repent, ask God to forgive me, and immediately know immediately that I'm still in Christ. I'm not out of Christ. I'm in Christ because I'm desiring to walk in heavenly places. That's a mindset. 
And so I'm asking you to try to keep that mindset alive in you. And I can nurse scripture when I give to you in Hebrews chapter 3. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1 says, uh, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, that's us. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, or our confession, which is Christ Jesus. Now Hebrews 12, beginning at verse 22, and I'm going to be closing with these verses, Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to read this to you yet. This is very, help, very helpful to help us in this. And verse 22 of Hebrews 12 says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God. You know, in my studies, I have a sermon I preach on who is Zion? What is Zion? Who are the Zionists? And in my study of the word Zion, I discovered that the Zion means the presence of God. It used to be that Israel, or first of all, it was the, Jerusalem was known as the city of Zion. First it was the Mount Zion, where King David lived on it. He lived on that mountain. It was called Mount Zion because of the presence of God with King David as the king of Israel. Then the city of Jerusalem became known as the city of Zion when Solomon built the temple and people came to Jerusalem to bring their offerings for the repent of their sins. And then the whole land of Israel became known as the land of Zion. All because of the presence of God in that land. But ultimately God's plan was to put his presence in the whole world through people. And so my teaching is that you are Zion today to the world. Because your body is his temple. God dwells in you. It used to be people used to, have to go to Jerusalem or to Israel to find God. Not today. They need, they need merely find you. And they can find God. Somebody say amen. amen. You can say hallelujah. <laughs> you really? They don't have to go to Jerusalem to find God. They need merely find you. And people can find God. Because you believe God dwells in you. You have God with you. You walk with God. You know God. You are the Zion of God. So he says, You have come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Literally, you become the heavenly Jerusalem to the rest of the world. That's literal. That's for real. And to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Verse 25. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not this earth only, but also heaven. And this word ye yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. God's ultimate end is going to be that everything that's burnable is going to be shaken and burned. And there's only one element upon this earth today, in this world today, that cannot be burned or cannot be shaken is the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. And I am the life. The truth cannot be burned. If anything can be burned, it's temporal. Everything about God is eternal. Eternal things cannot burn, will not be shaken. And so here I am. I'm a human, but I'm also the body of Christ. I'm a member of the body of Christ. So I have divine spirit in me also. I have Christ in me. Me is in me, and Christ is in me, and I can make room for Christ to become more and more formed in me. And the more he becomes formed in me, the less I'll be shaken. The more I trust in what God is in my life, then I won't be shaken, I won't be shook up, I won't have to panic and be scared to death, frightened. But I can walk in his peace, walk in his love. This is heavenly places. This is all attainable for us while we're here as Christians. I hope you can hear me. I hope I'm not making myself unclear. I'm trying to make it clear to you. That's why I'm repeating some of this over again. Because I don't want to be the only one enjoying this. I want all of you to enjoy it. And I know many of you already are. But there may be just one person here that never heard it quite like this before. And say, you know, there may be something to this. I'm going to have to look into this a little more perfectly. 
Maybe it is that I've been trusting in myself, thinking of me too much of the time, or I should be thinking more of Jesus all the time, because I am literally today in, seated together with Christ in heavenly places, if I'm born again. I am born again. So that means I am seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Now, if I'm not feeling it yet, that's up to me to begin to confess with my mouth what Christ is in me, so when I speak what Christ is in me, then me becomes what I'm speaking. Hallelujah. Hey, you don't have to pay anything for that. That's for nothing. It's in your Bible. You got, the, you got your Bible. That's what it says in the book. <laughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, some things, many things, a whole lot of things. No, no. All things have become new. If all things are new, that means even my Adamic original sin nature has been dealt with by God's grace. And from here on out, I can thank Him for everything He is in my life and look for Him to become formed more and more in me. And that's finding myself walking in heavenly places. Then he says in verse 28, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Let me say a word about that godly fear. Don't be afraid of having a godly fear. Not the fear that you're not measuring up, but a fear that you're not utilizing what God gave you. God, if you, especially if you find yourself often scared and nervous, frightened. If you're in that condition much of the time, you must understand that God doesn't want you to be in that condition. You don't have to be in that condition. You must begin to confess His peace. Thank you for your peace when you find yourself frightened. When you find yourself feeling unhappy or miserable, thank Him for His joy. Because He's still there even though your natural self, the original self, is making you feel what your soul is. But God has forgiven you already because you've been born again. Confess His peace. Confess His joy. Confess His love. And you are bringing yourself into a heavenly place, a heavenly position, literally. And other people will see it on you. They'll see it in you. And they'll love to be around you because it's contagious. It attracts other people, just like evil attracts people too. But godliness attracts people. It will make people want what you have. Is that clear? Heavenly places. Fulfilling our heavenly calling. That was my message this morning for you. I want, I want to be more heavenly. I know some people say, well, you're so heavenly money, you're no earthly good. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I am. But I'm sure having a good time on the earth doing what I'm doing. I'm only 85 and I haven't been thinking about retiring yet because I'm way too young for that. Because I'm enjoying what I'm doing on this earth. But I'm, sure I'm heavenly minded too. And I'm hoping I'm some earthly good. Because I'm speaking to a lot of earth Body, uh, earth, earth people out there on these benches right now. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Let it do something for you. Don't stay the way you are. Quit it. Be the way God wants you to be. And let Him do it through you. Let Him do it through you. All your trials, all your temptations, all your struggles and troubles, they're all to make you realize your weakness so you can thank Him for His strength, for what He has given to you. Thank Him for what the Bible says is yours as a child of God. You are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. If you're in the molly grubs, you're not living in the right place. You got to start talking right as a Christian. Talk what God says is yours. Thank Him for what He says is yours, and you'll have it. It'll be yours now. You have to wait to die to go to heaven to get it. He came from heaven. He came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. You heard that song, haven't you? He said he came from heaven to earth to show us the way. And Jesus himself said, I am the way. And I am the truth. And I am the life. So I said, just get a life. Get Jesus. Get a life. Get Jesus. And he is the life. He's the way. And he is the truth. And when people meet you, if you really believe that, then they're going to catch a glimpse of what is the way, what is the truth, and what is the life when they see you. Whoa. That's almost too much. I thought we had to die first to go to heaven for that to happen. No, no. He came from heaven to earth to make this all a reality for it to happen in your life. 
So when you come together, let me close with this. When you come together, try to make yourself do things you have never done before. Keep improving, keep growing. And uh, if the song director says, let's all sing it, do you see the song leader up here starting to get excited, jumping up and down? Tap your foot at least, do something. Let your knees come above a little bit and put your foot up and down off the floor. And if, you, if they don't mind, if he says, everybody stand, jump up and down a little bit. That won't hurt you. Get excited. When you get excited, when you get excited it does something to the, the uh, soul. The soul gets awakened. And the soul will come into the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You say, well, that's emotionalism. Well, if it's good, I don't mind it. I know I'm an emotional person. I can get sad. If I can get grieved. I can get upset, disturbed. But if I can get blessed, I'm going to go for the blessing. So it's all ours. It's all for the asking. It's all for the taking. It's already here. It's up to us to want to be seated together with Christ in what? Heavenly places. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places while we're in Detroit Lakes or in Minnesota where we have to pay taxes. You don't have to wait to die for it to get better. Amen. You can die to yourself here in Minnesota and enter into the presence of God who is also in Minnesota. Shall we stand to our feet? I'm going to dismiss you with a prayer. Amen. Well, thank you. I enjoyed sharing what I had to say. I'm, I must tell you, I'm still learning about this, still learning more, because it really, uh, it really attracts my mind when I stop and think that God knew me before the foundation of the world. I'm still thinking about that and how he knows me. But then again, when I stop, I think that God is a spirit. I never saw God physically. I know he exists. I'm not sure what he looks like. I'm not sure if he's round or if he's square. It doesn't matter to me anyway. I only know he's spirit. I'm not sure what that is either. It's invisible, I know that much. So is wind invisible. So is oxygen invisible. So there's a lot of things I do and believe in I don't see. So if God's word says, I already was in Christ before he formed the earth, I'm going to accept that. Which means God really wants me today to be in that mindset that I'm now in Christ, even though I was born in sin, but I became born again. Now I'm, I should be where I was in the beginning when God first made Adam and Eve. I already at that time was in Christ. And so were you. And so hang on to that and thank God that's where we are now. We are Christians in Christ, saved by his grace. The law is not going to, unless you want, want to make yourself stay in guilt. Well, I believe in the law all the time. I've got to be careful of this. I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, you know, you've been born again. You are now in Jesus. And when you do sin... You'll know it right away because you'll put the thought in your mind and repent of that right away and you won't do the same sin the next time. You won't keep doing that. Because you are in Christ in heavenly places. Father, I ask you, help us to understand these simple truths that we tried to explain this morning. And help us, Lord, to walk in the power of these truths. And help us not to allow ourselves to remain in a guilt condition and believe only in the old man but we want to believe in the new man. You said we could put on the new man and put off the old man. And we want to put on the new man, which is made in the image and likeness of God, Jesus Christ. So I thank you, Father, that you will help us here as a congregation here in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, to go forward, to go ahead, and let's expect changes to happen in our lives and help us to encourage ourselves to do the changing, not stay the way we've been, but to thank you for every day of our life that you have given us your peace, you've given us your joy, you've given us your goodness, all these different virtues that are in Christ, they are now ours for us to become changed into, that we can have something to do it through our confession, through our, our confession with our lips, our mouth. We are overcomers. We're not going to stay the way we've been because we're going to become more like you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for that. Bless Brother Tim, Pastor Tim, where he is and his family. <clears throat> all the workers of this congregation, bless this congregation, let it prosper, let it grow, keep it from the powers of darkness in every aspect we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Turn around and shake somebody's hand and say, God bless you. They want mine. Just shake somebody's hand and say, God bless you. <clears throat> God bless you.
coming down. Look at this. Thanks for joining us for today's broadcast. You are also invited to join us in person Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. If you enjoy this program, we'd love to hear from you. Comments can be sent to us online or write to us at the address on your screen. Thanks again for joining us. See you next week.